Hi, it's Manning44 here and today I would like to invite you to the review of the EMG Noveski N4 MWS Gen 3 Gas Blowback Replica from Double Eagle. Replica for the review was provided by Double Eagle. Double Eagle, after storming the AEG market with its sought out after M900 series, decided to enter the gas replica market in cooperation with EMG. And not just like that, with a licensed Noveski N4 MWS Gen 3 replica based on the proven Z system from Tokyo Marui. I'm not a great specialist in the GBBR replicas. This is my second review of a replica of this type, but I took the liberty of doing a little research and educating myself a bit on this topic. So what does it mean that the replica is in the Z system? The most important element is the bolt catch system, which has been redesigned to reduce the load on its elements, increasing the lifespan. The same in the case of the added bolt roller. But not only that. Changes have been also introduced to increase the gas efficiency. These are technical aspects, but there are also economic ones. Well, replica in this system have been on the market for several years now, and a lot of spare parts are available. So we got not only a replica with a proven system, but also one for which other manufacturers have managed to create a whole lot of upgraded parts if needed. Before we jump into the review, one more very important thing. The replica I received from Double Eagle is fully factory version and may differ in some details such as the magazine, pistol grip or stock or even bar inner barrel length uh, from those you can find in stores. This is due to the fact that when ordering stores can create their own sets. When it comes to the barrel length in countries where the limit is one joule, a shorter barrel will be installed. In Poland, where I am, we have a version with full barrel. Apart from these cosmetic elements, the replica will not differ in anything else. So in today's review, as usual, we'll see how the replica is built, both externally and internally, we'll check its performance and conduct shooting tests. But as usual, let's start with a small unboxing. In the black cardboard box with the Noveski logo, we'll find an extensive user manual, which I recommend reading, view of the unfolded replica with marking of all the parts, ramrod, folding side with an allen key, speed loader adapter, green gas magazine with a capacity of 36 BBs, a certificate confirming that this is product licensed by Noveski, and the EMG Noveski N4 MWS Gen 3 replica from Double Eagle. Let's take a closer look at it. The replica with folded stock measures 71 cm, while when fully extended its length is approximately 79 cm. The replica weighs over 2.3 kg. The magazine alone is around 400 grams. The vast majority of the replica is made of metal, but the manufacturer does not boast exactly what alloys is made of. The only polymer elements are the pistol grip and the stock. Here are also a few words about painting the replica. The paint coating looks really good. The paint is applied evenly and after playing with the replica for a longer time I did not notice any chips, even in a place exposed to the contact with moving elements such as the charging handle. Going from the front of the replica, we'll come across the KMO style muzzle device, which I think should fit Sandman style QD sound suppressors. But if we would like to install a silencer of our own, after unscrewing a small 1.5mm Allen screw, we can unscrew the muzzle device, which will give us access to the standard counterclockwise 40mm thread and the ability to attach any sound suppressor or tracer unit. 
When screwing the flash hider back on, remember to set the screw to the bottom of the barrel, as the thread has a recess prepared for it. Speaking of the outer barrel, it is silver in color and has markings in the form of the Noveski logo, the caliber of the firearm equivalent, that is 300 blackout, and the markings 8T, which probably means the thread pitch of the barrel in the real steel counterpart, but I'm not sure about this. The barrel also has a dummy gas block and gas pipe. Moving further, we came across the NSR-9 front in the m -Lock standard. It has four mounting places on the sides and the bottom of the grip, on which we can mount any accessories in the m -Lock standard. At the top, it has a wrist rail along its entire length, extending to the upper receiver. The difference in height between the rails is almost imperceptible. Here we can mount the polymer foldable and adjustable sides from the set. The front side can be adjusted vertically, and the rear side can be adjusted horizontally, and it has two side holes to choose from. On the front, in addition to the manufacturer's markings on both sides, we also find the serial number of the replica, which is hidden at the bottom of the front. On the metal receiver of the Noveski Gen 3, there are manufacturer's markings in the form of the inscription on the upper receiver, under which there is their logo and inscription, Noveski Rifle Works LLC Grand Pass Oregon USA. A little further there is the N4 model marking and the selector markings. And on the other side there is also logo Noveski on the pins and working bolt assist. The last logo can be found on the top of the receiver, near the charging handle. This one is the double-sided and it's in the airsoft version of the Super Badass model from Noveski, which is confirmed by the markings when we pull it back. At this point the shell ejector flap will also open, with the caliber markings 300 blackout on it. If there is no empty magazine in the replica, after releasing the charging handle, it and the bolt will return to the front position and the hammer will be cocked and we can dry fire. Since we are working around the bolt, let's see how to set up the hop-up. There are several ways. First, let's start with the how the manufacturers recommend doing it. So, we need to knock out the rear pin. If you can do it with your fingers, that's great, I have to use some tool to help me. Pull the pin out as far as it will go. It won't come out completely, so you will not lose it. Now we break the replica on the hinge. The next step is to back up the bolt using the charging handle until we see the hop-up knob. Turn the knob back to increase the hop-up. And by turning it forward, we reduce it. The knob works with resistance and clicks when adjusting, so that we will not lose the settings by itself. We do everything in reverse order and we can test the setting. That's a lot of work. Let's see other ways. We will try to adjust hop-up without disassembling the replica. To do this I pull the bolt back, then I press the lower part of the bolt release and lock the bolt so that it stays in the rear position. Now we have several options to choose from. If you have slim fingers you can try to change the settings with your finger through the shell ejector window, I didn't succeed. You can use for example a small screwdriver, just remember to not damage the knob. The method that worked best for me was to put my hand through the magazine well and operating the knob with my middle finger. Just be careful not to let the bolt fall on your fingers. To do this I recommend putting your finger under the bolt release. The trigger guard is enlarged so you can use the replica even with larger gloves. The polymer pistol grip has a distinct structure that improves the grip and as always in GBBR replicas it is narrower than the AAG. In my opinion, it makes holding the replica quite comfortable. Moving to the rear, we come across a simple backplate with no place to attach a sling, which is a pity. The polymer stock is very slim, has a rubberized butt plate, a push dot mount on both sides, and a total of 6 length settings. Interestingly, the stock has a slight sideways play, but it does not clutter, but it moves along the guide with noticeable resistance thanks to two steel springs that are pressed against the guide. The dimensions of the guide itself are slightly different than the toes in the AEG, but we can still install AEG stocks, but they will move with greater resistance. Let's move on how the replica works and we'll start with the selector. The first mode is of course, safe, but as you can see I cannot set it, and it is due to the fact that the replica is not charged. This is not a design error, but an intentional action, because the selector works in the same way in the firearms and it's kind of firing pin indicator. If we are not sure where the replica is charged and the selector is in semi mode, just try switching it to save. If it works, the replica is charged. If not, it means it's not charged. The next is semi mode. 
and the last one is full auto mode. Just like in the real firearm counterpart, we're changing the selector setting. On the other side of the receiver, we'll be able to see what mode the replica is set in thanks to the arrow and markings. The trigger has standard travel. It is a bit spongy and its research falls at the very front of the trigger movement. The polymer magazine has DMAC markings and caliber 5.56x45. The replica has the markings of 300 blackout, but let's say that is not an error, because in the firearm counterpart you can use magazines for 5.56 ammunition because their dimensions are close enough. The magazine has a window on both sides with dummy bullets, which is a nice detail. The gas charging valve is located just below the exhaust valve. The manufacturer recommends charging the empty magazine with gas for about 7 to 9 seconds. From what I read on the internet, it shouldn't be loaded all the way, but let the people who've been using GBBRs in the TMMWS standard correct me here. Magazine holds 36 BBs, and to load it I recommend a classic speed loader with the adapter that we received with the replica. I recommend not losing it, because without it it can be really difficult. The fit of the replica is at a really high level. The receiver house fit is perfect, nothing rattles, and the only loose part as I mentioned earlier is the stock, but it doesn't rattle either. The operation of the replica is as follows. Insert the magazine loaded with BBs and gas into the replica. We reload the replica and start shooting. When we run out of ammunition, the bolt will stop in the rear position, which tells us that we need to change the magazine. After changing it, we press the bolt release and we can continue firing. After shooting, we take out the magazine and we have a choice. Switch to safe and leave it like that. Or fire a dry shot and leave it on semi. When it comes to the performance of the replica, on one charge of smart gas, shooting once a second, in a room with a temperature of about 23.6 degrees Celsius, I managed to fire about 82 shots before the bolt stopped performing a full cycle, so on one charge it should be possible to fire at least two full magazines of BBs. As standard in GBBRs, in full auto mode we can fire a dozen or so shots in a row before the magazine freezes and the replica stops firing. When it comes to compatibility with other parts in the Tokimur standard, unfortunately I have no way to verify it. But in the video description you will find a link to the material from Jaeger Precision that you are currently seeing and in which he checked which parts from other manufacturers are compatible. So if you are interested in this information, I encourage you to, to watch his video. We know how the replica looks like and what functions it has. Let's see how it disassembles and what is inside. I start disassembling the replica by removing the rear and front pin. Let's deal with the lower receiver in a moment, let's start from the upper. I pull out the bolt along with the charging handle, as I mentioned earlier, this is the super badass model from Noveski. The bolt is made mainly of metal, as you can see it's almost dry. The nozzle is made of polymer. After several hundred shots, where can be seen on the place where the hammer roller hits the bolt. Here is a steel bolt roller at the back. And here there is a steel lock plate in the Z Tokimori standard. It's very good that it's made of steel, because it will not wear out as in the case with other systems, such as the WE system I previously reviewed. To get to the hop-up chamber, I have to disassemble the entire front. I start by unscrewing the six Torx screws with a T20 bit. Now I can slide the front forward. It has a steel pin that goes into the receiver, thanks to which it's stabilized and does not move sideways. Now I use a 1.5mm Allen key to unscrew the flash hider and take it off. And using a 2mm Allen key I unscrew two screws at the base of the dummy gas block, thanks to which I can uninstall it together with the dummy gas pipe. Now I unscrew the barrel nut and remove it. I can now remove the barrel from the receiver. As you can see the hop-up chamber is split in two, the part with the knob remains in the receiver. Here we also see how the functional bolt assist works. The barrel is stabilized from the front with a small o-ring. Pulling the chamber and barrel out of the outer barrel turned out to be quite demanding and I had to use a flat screwdriver to push out the chamber out of the outer barrel. 
The metal chamber is in the TM standard. To disassemble it, just remove one o-ring and we have access to the inside. The hop-up arm is made of metal and as you can see was adjusted. The knob is made of medium hardness silicon. The barrel and the backing are in the GBB VSR standard. The backing is quite hard and has a flattened contact patch. It also has a protrusion on the outside, which I haven't seen before. I notice a slight wear on the top of the collar. The brass barrel is 270mm long and I don't know what its diameter is. Let's move to the lower receiver. I start by pulling out the buffer along with its spring. To do this I just need to push its lock down. Buffer is made of polymer and has a springy bumper at the back. I start disassembling the trigger assembly by removing the steel selector. Then I unscrew the Phillips screw at the back of the trigger assembly. I punch out the trigger pin. It has grooves and a notch for a lock located in the trigger assembly. And I don't forget to remove the magazine release. Just push it deep and unscrew it from the button by turning the catch. Just be careful that it doesn't shoot out like it did to me. Now I can push the entire trigger assembly up. I will not go into the details of this assembly if you need to know how to do it. In the video description I added a link to the material step by step showing how to do it. I will only show you what parts are installed inside and what they are made of. First the plastic cover. The Z plate locking the bolt is made of thick steel. The pin responsible for clicking the selector is metal but not steel. The same for the pin of the bolt lock system and the element C of the system. The bolt release is made of steel. I'm happy to find a lot of grease inside. The shell itself is probably made of Zamac. And here is the steel trigger pin lock that I mentioned earlier. The full auto sear is made of steel. It is a element that comes into contact with the bolt. And the semi sear is made of Zamac. It doesn't matter, it's an internal part. The trigger and the catch are made of steel. But this trigger element is Zamac. Same with the trigger lever. The hammer is internally made of steel along with the roller and its pin. The valve knocker is also made of steel. And pins in the shell. Let's look at the all parts again. These are all the steel parts of the trigger assembly. All these elements are under the greatest load and some come into contact with the moving bolt. In my opinion they look very good and I think that they should ensure long-term operation of the replica without the need to replace them. These are all metal, but not steel parts. Despite having already fired several hundred shots, they look very good and I don't see much wear on them. I think that making them from steel was not necessary, so the manufacturer decided to make them probably from aluminum zinc alloy that is Zamek. We know how the replica is built inside, so it's time for chrono and shooting tests. The tests were performed before disassembling and with the use of Smart Gas brand Green Gas and a hop-up set for 0.32 grams Petsa Arms HBO BBs. Why that weight? Because they were the heaviest BBs that I was able to hop with a slight overhop. Unfortunately for 0.36 gram BBs the hop-up was too weak. And as well we know, in GBBR is the best to pack the heaviest BBs the replica can handle. The magazine was freshly loaded with gas, which meant that the first 5 shots were clearly more powerful, so I discarded them. The next 31 shots gave me an average result of 1.30 joules or 295.8 fps. The less gas there was in the magazine and the lower its temperature, the power dropped and from the initial 1.4 joules, it dropped in the last shot to 1.18 joules, giving a difference of 0.22 joules which gave 25.2 fps. The replica is not particularly over gassed, so don't expect a lot of joule creep on heavier BBs, but it's slightly present. The rate of fire was around 14 shots per second. Let's move on to the shooting test, which were performed at a temperature of about 20 degrees Celsius from a supported position. From a distance of 30 meters, hitting a target with a diameter of 60 centimeters was no problem. From 40 meters it was very similar, only a few shots missed the target.
From 50 meters it was much more difficult. The BBs reached the target, but they were unevenly curved. Some hit the target and others often flew over it. Due to the wind, hitting from 60 meters was very difficult. Even with 0.32 gram BBs, the BBs seemed to be hopped enough to reach the target, but hitting it was very difficult due to the spread. So I will estimate that the effective range is at between 40 and 50 meters and the maximum at 60 meters. However, I was curious whether the culprit of such results was the rather hard hop-up bucking, so I installed the Psionic upgrades bucking with a dedicated high nap from the set. This combination not only worked with 0.36 gram BBs without any problems, but because there was still some reserve on the nap, I think it would work with even heavier BBs. Also better still increased the average power on 0.32 gram BBs to 1.4 joules. At a distance of 50 meters, I had no problem hitting the target shot after shot. After sighting in, 60 meters was also achievable for me. As you will see in a moment, after a short fight with the wind, I was able to hit the target again and again, so as you can see, it's worth trying a better hop-up backing. Replacing it not only increased the effective range to 60 meters, but also significantly improved accuracy. EMG Noveski N4 MWS Gen 3 from Double Eagle is a great looking licensed replica made entirely of metal. And Noveski's numerous markings will ensure that we will not forget about it even for a moment. Apart from its appearance, it has a great fit and a good worksmanship, only the trigger is a bit spongy. The replica is based on the proven Z system from Toki Marui. Together with a significant number of internal steel elements, it creates a combination that shall ensure long-term failure-free operation. When it comes to performance, with a power of about 1.3 joules on 0.32 gram BBs, we can count on an effective range of around 50 meters. However, I recommend replacing the hop-up backing with for example Sonic upgrades, which not only allowed me to use heavier BBs, but also increased the accuracy, power and effective range to 60 meters. Due to my playstyle that is a bit of spray and pray, I'm not a big fan of GBBR replicas, but I must say that there is something about this replica that makes me want to try it out in the field, which I will do when I buy more than one magazine. While playing with my first GBBR that was the WEM4 PCC, I had fun and it was something different, but somewhere in the back of my mind I was bothered by the fact that all the key elements of the trigger assembly are made of aluminium zinc alloy or chinesium. When I delved deeper into the topic, it turned out that those parts tend to wear out and cause problems after some time, which probably discouraged me from continuing to play with this replica. Here most of the internal elements are made of steel and the Z system itself looks much more durable, which makes me very happy because, as you remember, the WE review, the bolt catch broke almost at the very beginning but I don't think there's anything to worry about here. Apart from that, I like the look of the replica, especially the quality of the paint. 
Many times after disassembling other replicas for review, I could notice some chips or scratches, but I didn't notice it, notice it here and I hope it will remain that even after long term use. The fit of the replica is also very good as its operation. The replica kicks nicely when shooting and during the test I never had any jams, even through the slide was practically dry. What I don't like is the slightly spoonery trigger and the fact that the backplate has no place to attach the sling. We have mounting points on the stock, but I'm not a big fan of the solution. Additionally, while the magazine itself has an interesting modern look modeled on the PMAC, I have the impression that encasing the metal gas tank with a polymer shell uh, insulates it and make, may make it difficult for it to reach room temperature after cooling down after shooting, which may affect the possible number of shots fired on one gas charge, and its efficiency when firing bursts, which also will explain why it freezes so quickly. I'm curious if a fully metal magazine from Tokyo Marui would perform better. If you had the opportunity to test their replica with TM Max, let me know how they perform. As for the price, it's not bad either. At the time of writing the review, the Evike version of the replica cost about 350 US dollars, which for a licensed gas replica with a such number of steel elements, I don't think it's a bad price. Especially since TM replicas with this system are much more expensive. That's all for today. Let me know if you liked today's review and what do you think about the replica itself, and if you already have one, how it works for you. And for now, thanks for watching and see you next time.